This is uh, Dr. Barry Uretsky. I'm the Director of Interventional Cardiology at the Central Arkansas Veterans Health System and the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I've just presented at the International Academy of Cardiology on the value of post-PCI FFR, and uh, I'd like to just share a few of the, the points we made. We, we know that uh, FFR prior to uh, coronary intervention uh, is well accepted and used in stable ischemic heart disease patients who have angiographically intermediate lesions. However, the value of FFR after the intervention where the angiogram looks ideal is not as clear. And in fact, current guidelines are silent on this issue. So uh, in our anecdotal experience, we found uh, it's a valuable uh, measure to take to assure that the lesion is well managed. Now, it would seem in intuitive that the FFR after angiographic optimization should be uh, normalized, but in fact, there are reasons that it isn't. One of them is that some vessels have diffuse disease. And so that although the angiogram looks fine, the angiogram is a luminogram. It doesn't really tell you the true diameter of the uh, undiseased vessel. And so you can think that it's a completely normal when in fact it isn't. So that's one of the main reasons. And other reasons include the fact that angiographically inapparent lesions become more apparent when you treat the worst lesion. And sometimes stents are underdeployed so that they look fine angiographically, but in fact, relative to the external elastic lamina, they, the diameter is too small. So for all those reasons, we believed that measurement of post-PCI FFR has value. We reviewed our experience in over 600 lesions and found that the incidence of an actually ischemic or very low normal FFR was about 20%. That is to say it's a very common phenomenon. And the reason that this is important is because the FFR post-PCI has a direct relationship with outcome. And in multiple studies, it's been shown that the patients with the worst FFR have the worst outcomes. So therefore, if one could improve FFR when there's a low FFR at the end of a procedure, then that might in turn improve long-term outcomes. Now, can you do that? Or is a low FFR an indication of a larger plaque burden that really can't be improved with further treatment. So we looked at this, and in the 600 plus patients that we uh, did FFR on, there was uh, incidence of 20%, or about 120 lesions, that had uh, a low FFR at the end of the procedure. In those 120 patients, we found that we could improve FFR from, on average, 0.78 to 0.87, or a 9% improvement in FFR, simply by further treatment. And that further treatment was post-stent dilatation in 50%, stent plus post-dilatation in another 33%, and a combination of, uh, or, or I should say 33%, uh, with another stent and about 20% with stent plus post dilatation. In about 10%, we imaged the vessel and because of diffuse disease did not do any further treatment. So in summary, the incidence of low post PCI FFR is high at about 20% and can be improved with further treatment, which may in turn improve long-term outcome. For that reason, we think it may be an important therapeutic procedure. 